You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. I'm very happy to have on the Goldstein on Gelt show Jerry Sanders, who's a lawyer. He's a former Navy SEAL intelligence officer, senior counsel and advisor to many non-U.S. governments. And today we're going to be talking about the company of which he is a chairman called Skytran, which is a NASA Space Act company. Jerry, a pleasure to have you. Hey, nice to be here. Thanks uh, for having me on the show. So tell us what Skytran is all about. Skytran is all about the future. When you were a little kid, you probably looked at the Jetsons and mother said, Doug, one day you'll be traveling around like that. Well, the, that day has arrived. Um, Skytran is an elevated, high-speed, low-cost, private, rapid transportation system. Now, I know that's a mouthful, but imagine, if you will, um, little cute uh, rocket-like vehicles moving around on an elevated guideway. That means above the traffic, above the stop signs, above the red lights. Um, and it's a vehicle that will take you from any point uh, within an urban grid to any point in or outside of that urban grid to the suburban grid. And it will do so without getting stuck in traffic, without stopping at any one station but your own. And you won't have to wait for someone else's schedule. You just walk up, get in it like a taxi, and off you go. And wow. off you go, I should say, at 150 miles an hour. Holy cow. Does this exist anywhere, or is this still in, in trial stage? Well, we have several prototypes that have been built at the NASA Ames Research Center in California. And we're hoping to build the first pilot system um, here in Israel. Okay. And that's, I say here because that's where I am right now. All right. The, the company is called a NASA Space Act company. What does that mean? Um, well, what that means is that we have signed an agreement with NASA under the Space Act. The Space Act is an act that was promulgated by Congress at the end of the 50s. It was designed to um, help NASA deliver its message of modernity and new technology to the American people. And, and that requires NASA um, every now and then to select a group of companies that it deems to be strategically important with new technology and to provide those companies with its logistical technical hardware software support we qualified in a selection process to be the beneficiaries of, of that space act and in part i'm sure it's because several of our engineers are nasa alumni okay so this is very space age space age technology why is it that we really need new technology if you go to new york city or to washington dc there's a pretty sophisticated subway system already in place in fact in jerusalem there's a there's a light rail already in place why something new well i'll get to the jerusalem light rail in a moment but with regards to new york city and washington i completely agree with you new york city manhattan uh, really does not need a sky train system because they do have an excellent subway system but i should remind you that the last mile of the New York subway cost $2 billion. That's billion with oh. a B for one mile of subway. <laughs> now, when you consider that Skytrain costs $6 million a, mile, a kilometer, pardon me, that would be $9 million a mile. So you compare $9 million a mile to $2 billion a mile. I think one rapidly sees that Skytrain is the modern alternative to subway systems. Do you think that people are going to complain about it because, in the same way that there are, there are people who don't like to have windmill farms way out in the water that says they blocks their view? This year you're going to have something uh, presumably over all of the streets in town. 
Absolutely, you're you're absolutely right. People will complain about it, and people complain <laughs> about every people complain about everything, right? All right. People, people you know, the old joke at uh, Grossinger's and the Catskill was that the food was terrible and the portions are too small. <laughs> so, so, so people will complain. However, with that said, really, what's our alternative? It's not as though an urban dweller is going to be sitting in a pastoral setting if there is no sky trend. If there is no sky train, there's going to be a bus belching out diesel smoke or a noisy train or something else or gridlock. So um, sky train will have an aesthetic impact, but we think that the benefits it delivers far outweighs those. And in fact, one of the reasons the mayor of Tel Aviv has uh, invited us to build a sky train system within Hayarkon Park is precisely to show the residents of Tel Aviv what a terrific system it is so that when we proceed to build the system in Tel Aviv, the residents will welcome us and not try and fight us. So um, we, we have that in mind. We know there will be critics, but overall, the benefits far outweigh the shortcomings. All right. We are talking with Jerry Sanders, who's the head of a company called Skytran, which is building a new model for getting around a city that goes above the streets. It actually sounds quite something. So you're going to build your, your original trial in Israel in Hayarkon Park. So it's really going to be more like a, a ride that someone might take at Disney World in the beginning. I don't say that because the mayor of Tel Aviv is adamant that it not be a ride, but in fact part of the city's transportation system. And so when I say Park Hayarkon, I know it, it gives off notions of Coney Island, but it really isn't. It's going to connect the new high-tech part of Tel Aviv called Atidim, A-T-I-D-I-M. That's a very um, techy, wacky area um, east of uh, Tel Aviv, but still within the city limits of Tel Aviv. And that uh, new neighborhood is connected to Tel Aviv through um, perhaps the equivalent of Tel Aviv Central Park, which is Park Hayarkon Park. It's the green belt that follows the city along the Arkon River all the way to the um, through the University of Tel Aviv into the port of Tel Aviv. And as you may know, the port of Tel Aviv is the 24 hours, seven day a week restaurant, entertainment uh, district. And so it's actually a terrific route. Uh, it's one that's presently not well served by public transportation. The pilot will be, uh, in effect, a probably half kilometer or a kilometer that once approved will uh, become part of the larger system. Okay, so I, I want to bring you back to something you started saying before regarding the Jerusalem light rail. But also, maybe as you answer that, one of the questions you could answer is, how are you going to deal with the, the potential threat of terror, which is something a lot of people complain they didn't plan for with the Jerusalem light rail? And if you're talking about this kind of funky transportation system, it certainly seems like it might be a real target. Well, in fact, I think um, we would give the Darwin award to the terrorist who decided to blow himself up within our vehicle because it's <laughs> basically a one person vehicle. So God bless, go for it. Um, and uh, the system is uh, repaired within hours because the entire system is built like Lego and we can um, plug out and plug in components with a simple cherry picker. So in fact, I think we're probably a much safer system than any other public transportation system that aggregates large numbers of people in a small area. We are a decentralized system, and as such, we um, do not bring a lot of people to one location in order to um, board or um, disembark from our system. Okay, that sounds like a good solution. And th another complaint that uh, I personally witnessed on the Jerusalem Rail was it took years and years beyond what they said it would and cost billions of dollars more, I think, than the original plans. How do you expect to deal with that problem or that level of bureaucracy in Israel? Well, it's true that Israel is, is known um, for having a great deal of red tape. However, what is perhaps known but not as frequently mentioned, that Israel is basically a two-telephone 
country with, with two telephones, two degrees of separation, you can get to anyone, um, including the prime minister, the president, um, or any other government official. And so um, while it's true that Israel has a, a lot of red tape, it's also true that when the powers that be decide to cut the red tape, they cut it and you, one doesn't have to go through the legalistic hurdles that one might in other quote unquote less bureaucratic countries. In fact, uh, Israel's Ministry of Transportation has been incredible in um, moving us forward and removing the bureaucratic hurdles so as to enable us to start construction of these systems. So we're um, very encouraged by what's happening here and we're, we're delighted to work with um, the various branches of government, all of, whom, all of which are very excited about the system. So how soon do you see this system up and running? Well, we um, hope to have it up and running within uh, a year and a half to two um, from the moment we are allowed to start construction. And um, we know that Tel Aviv is working um, assiduously to modify the urban plan so as to allow us to put our holes in the ground. And we are hoping and expect, um, based on what we are told, that that will happen within the next three to four months. Um, so we could be, be we, could, we could be in construction very quickly. Well, that'll be very exciting. And and the the whole system because it's high up in the air. How do people who might have trouble with stairs? How does this work for disabled or elderly? Um, the stations come with uh, elevators, and um, they're small, um, single wheelchair elevators. And and one simply steps into the elevator, and it takes them to the uh, vehicle. And is someone who is older or disabled, able to get in and out of the cars themselves easily? Um, well, I believe so. We, we've, um, they're, they're ergonomically designed to be easy uh, access and, and easy exit. I think it's a lot easier to get in and out of than a standard a car where, where you know, one may have to bend down and, and get pushed out and so forth. Um, our chairs uh, swivel and allow people easy access in and out, and we have uh, vehicles um, that can service people with um, wheelchairs. So we're we're quite optimistic that this is going to run flawlessly. All right, it sounds very exciting. I'm very very much looking forward to trying it and seeing what it looks like to see how Tel Aviv gets converted into this Jetson style future city that you described. We've been talking to Jerry Sanders, who uh, is is a is the head of a company called Skytran, which is developing a new model for transportation, for urban transportation. Jerry, we're just about out of time, but in the last few seconds, can you just tell people, how can they follow your work and follow the company? Well, we do have a website. It's uh, Skytran, S-K-Y-T, like Tango, R-A-N, like Nancy, dot U-S. So www.skytran.us. And I invite uh, your listeners to contact me directly. That's Jerry, J-E-R-R-Y, at skytran.us. Okay, Jerry Sanders, thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Douglas. Nice talking to you. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.